understood that if they called on God, that God would answer prayer. And the same God that brought us from chattel slavery is still on the throne. The same God that brought us from the back of the bus is still on the throne. The same God that brought us from Jim Crow is still on the throne. And if we are right, he'll fight our battle. And we'll put George's name in history where they said that's the one that they shouldn't have touched. That's the neck they shouldn't have been down on. Because if my people called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from your wicked way, then you will hear from heaven and I will heal the land. I, I want to say we have said we're going to keep marching. We're going to keep protesting. August 28th, we're going to Washington by the tens of thousands. We're going to have a national march on the anniversary of I Have a Dream. Floyd family and other families are going to lead it. But I want to say this before I leave to the Floyd family. Don't, don't ever forget in your darkest hour that be not dismayed. Whatever be ties, God will take care of you. I'm in right church. I can preach a little bit. Beneath his wing of love abide. God will take care of you. I was like Floyd. I grew up with daddy gone. Mama had to make it with welfare checks. I used to go and shop with the food stamps. A lot of folks say that, but the way I know for loners, if you've been on food stamps, is I ask you what color was your How long you been saved? Do you think that's biblical preaching? What we call that in the African American experience is hooping. It's where the uh, pastor, preacher, speaker, he changes his rhythm. And then typically there's some accompaniment of uh, organ playing in the background. And you can see when he would say certain phrases, then the organ would play. And, and that's a certain rhythm that uh, is displayed in preaching in churches all over the land. And that is, I believe, the cause of the church in the state that it is. Uh, again, I agree. I don't know what degree, but I agree that there are many in the church today who are not saved. They go to church for a show. They're not letting the words come into their mind. And so again, how do we learn? We first learn uh, through the mind. Uh, and, and then uh, we agree and we start to, del to delight. Uh, and then we put it into practice. And so I submit to you the reason that the church is anemic as it is, we got far too many preachers like Al Sharpton who are more concerned with their style and have no substance. Do you go to a church that does this on a weekly basis? That the pastor hoops at the end and he might have the gift of gab. He might be a great oratorial orator like uh, Jesse Jackson. That's not preaching. Uh, a, a preacher simply think about yesterday again. Think about uh, the Apostle Paul. Would you want to submit to me? He hooped. Think about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Do you think he hooped? doing the Sermon on the Mount. Yet this is what we get out of the pulpit and far too many land. And no, I am not advocating that uh, you, uh, it's some kind of dry, stale uh, reading of the text. Uh, I, I, I come with emotion. I come with passion. But I'm trying to stimulate your mind. I'm, and again, look where you're at. Thinking critically from an evangelical worldview. 
thinking. We have to think. As the man thinketh, so is he. Not as a man feels. The heart is deceitfully wicked, and who can know it? That's the problem in the church. There are certain black churches I won't even go back to. And um, I say that, and they're family members' church. I won't go back. Because I'm, I'm not here for a show. You, you got to feed my mind. And once you feed my mind, my heart will delight in it. You feed my mind, and then my soul is going to rejoice. Because I'm going to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. So today, this is going to be a really short uh, uh, YouTube posting. I'm going to have you listen uh, to Renewing Your Mind. And I'll put the link in the description. I, I encourage you. R.C. Sproul's died in the, the year 2017, but his ministry lives on. I told you the other day, I wake up first and study my Bible. I, I then listen to Al Mohler. He takes July off every year. I then listen to the world and everything in it. And then I end most days by listening to Renewing Your Mind. The ministry led for over 40 years by Dr. R.C. Sproles, Sr. And so uh, R.C. Sproles has been such a rich blessing in my life. And he had me better understand God must first come in through the senses of my mind. Then my heart will rejoice and then I will put it into practice. Never perfectly, but consistently. Come take the journey with me. Click the subscribe button. Click that bell to be notified. And then you can walk with me as we walk this journey together through this process of sanctification where we try to, we seek to, we endeavor to, to put more and more of Christ and less and less of us. But my brothers and my sisters, black brothers, white brothers, tall brothers, short brothers, fat brothers, skinny brothers. We go to church to have our souls fed through the mind, then through the heart, and then we leave that sanctuary to put it into practice. But that's not what's happening. And did you notice the crowd response? History is going to remember George Floyd, and I'm going to get up and celebrate that. What are they going to remember? See, it's all about feelings, not intellectually. Intellectually, I would understand, yes, it was grievous that George Floyd died the way he died. But we cannot make a hero out of George Floyd. But I'm going to stop because this video is going to be really short. And I want you to consider listening to R.C. Sproul's. He does a much better job than I ever could uh, illuminating. It's so important. Uh, he, he uses the passage. And, and so here is a, a example of biblical preaching. He takes a text, 1 Peter, where Peter says that we must gird up our minds. He's talking to the scattered believers dispersed through uh, Jerusalem. We must gird up our mind. And so it begins in the mind. Uh, consider click and subscribe. I'll have a short word to say about uh, RC, and then that'll be the extent of this video. I'm going to produce the uh, uh, the attended uh, video looking at the Texas uh, voter uh, registration law that is being uh, contemplated, uh, but the 50 Democratic senators have uh, taken a trip out of uh, Texas so they wouldn't be able to have a quorum in the Texas legislative legislation because they protest and again we'll talk more about it but they protest because the bill requires anyone voting absentee to have some kind of proof through some ID and the Democrats they see that as something uh, uh, negative so tune in with me coming up next on renewing your mind Christians are called over and over again in sacred scripture. 
not to park their minds in the parking lot when they enter into church, but to awaken their minds that they may think clearly and think deeply about the things of God. There are those in the church who say that uh, Christianity is a religion of the heart, not the mind. They say if we emphasize the mind too much, we get a cold, rational religion instead of a warm faith. Today on Renewing Your Mind, Dr. R.C. Sproul takes us to 1 Peter chapter 1 to show us that we can't really love something we don't understand. I'm sure that... I'm just sharing this with you for your consideration. I'm not going to have much commentary. You can listen to the podcast and form your own conclusions. But brothers and sisters, RC is going to walk you through why we must first delight in an intellectual understanding before we can ever move to the emotive. And so far too many Christians, they're just emotional. And he, he's going to use this this great illustration. He asked a student in the class a question and the question, the student responded, well, I feel. And RC had to stop him and correct him. He wasn't asking him how he feels. Sometimes I don't feel like loving my wife. Sometimes I don't even feel like worshiping God. Uh, because again, the heart is deceitfully wicked. And so if we trust our heart, uh, we will all we will frequently arrive at the wrong conclusions. There are a lot of times I don't want to love my children. Uh, I'm selfish. I'm lazy. I'm I'm, I'm whatever. I'm, I'm a lot of things. I'm a lot of things. But when I look at things intellectually, I can always come back. Yes, I don't want to love my children, but they're my children, and so I won't give in to my emotions. I won't give in to uh, my feelings. Uh, because I understand things intellectually. So again, three things, intellectual, emotion, emotive, and then volition. And it first starts with the head. It has to be first in the head before it can be really into the heart. And it has to be both into the head, into the heart, before it can get into the hands and the feet. It's really simple, brothers and sisters. But I'm going to stop here. I'm going to include the R.C. Sproles. You can listen to the entire uh, exposition. And again, you're going to see a radical difference between how he uh, handles the word of God. No hooping. Uh, and in fact, I can never forget, I was telling a fellow believer, hey, you need to listen to R.C. Sproles. And she did. And she said he was boring. See, we want we want to be we want to be entertained. Uh, we want somebody with the gift of gab, uh, and that's not what the church is about. And that's why the church is in the condition that it's in. And so, uh, I simply encourage you to avail yourself uh, of this, and I'll put the link. And I would strongly uh, encourage you to subscribe. Excuse me, I'm hic at the hiccups at the most inappropriate time. I would. I would encourage you to uh, subscribe to Renewing Your Mind. It's a great ministry, and I'm still blessed some four years after the death of R.C. Sproul's Prolific. Wrote, wrote over 40 books uh, and one of the most brilliant thinkers. I have been blessed to have sat under his teaching. I've listened to his uh, podcast for well over 10 years. Uh, in fact, it was one of the few conferences that I went to. I went to a Ligonier conference in Baltimore, Maryland, when I was stationed at the Pentagon. Uh, this would have been like 2011, 12. I thought so much of it, I, uh, I, I forced my daughter uh, to come with me so she can be exposed to some good biblical teaching. Okay, uh, again, I would encourage you to click the subscribe button to click that bell to be notified, keep your hands to the plow, and seek to serve for an audience of one. I'll post that other video later today, uh, speaking about the Texas voter registration bill. This is a hot topic, not only in Texas, but also in Georgia and other places in the land that 
minorities, African Americans, are complaining that because they're being required to use an ID, that that is somehow voter uh, suppression. That uh, in Georgia, they're complaining that they can't vote on Sundays what, uh, as they go to church or as they leave church. And, and so to them, that's an inconvenience and somehow that's voter suppression. And so again, here's gonna be my thesis. If voter suppression is so easy, they simply can not allow you to vote without an ID or not allow you to vote uh, on Sunday, uh, then you don't deserve to vote. Period. End of story. Full stop.